Wow, I, I, as I'm looking through the list here is available, they've actually banned them all up. There's no DK available, but... It's Go for the one druid. Okay. Okay, so they do switch it back. It looks like it's good. It's going to be a bat rider in the mid lane yeah. and the lone druid. This is uh, Bulldog's number two. If if you consider Nature's Prophet his number one, lone druid is right there as the number two. But you could put that in either order. And, and the thing is, the lines can actually run an aggressive tri lane as well. Um, the Wraith King, Marana, Shadow Demon, and you don't even have to have the Marana as a farming hero. It could be the Wraith King that's the farming hero as well. That yeah, it, it could change very easily. That aggressive Freyline, especially if you get a level or two on Shadow Demon, becomes very, very difficult. The problem is though, you're going up against a Lion and Vengeful Spirit. If it was a Doom in the Radiant tri lane, then it'd be a little bit easier. But they're going to pick a hero here that goes in the tri lane with Team Empire and then probably run the Doom and that off lane. Mm -hmm. Still, though, I think tri lane versus tri lane is a big possibility here, which is something we don't see a lot of, and we haven't seen a lot of in this tournament Five either. Yeah. And uh, I would imagine this final pickup probably going to be more of their core carry hero for Silent, and it's actually going to roll with the Naga Siren. We've seen them pick up some sort of, you know, bit of outside the typical norm, like a gyrocopter, what have you, but here we go. A bit of a, a small flashback. The uh, farm-intensive Naga Siren. This makes many people sweat as far as the heavy push power, the heavy ricing ability that this Naga could bring to the table, and, well, we'll see if it's going to work out for Team Empire, as they're going to be going against Team Alliance here. These teams have do have a little bit of history going against each other as far as far as Reco, they are matched head-to-head -head at about 24 games, and believe it or not, 12 for 12. 12 wins, 12 losses for both sides, 50% down the middle. The last time they met up was about June 15th, the Dream League Season 1 Finals, and it was Alliance to come out on top 2-1. to one. Yeah, I mean, this is a matchup that's been going on for a long time. I mean, a pretty big rivalry, I'd say, as well. Interesting to note, Loda will pick up the Wraith King. And so that is going to be a farming Wraith King with EGM supporting on the Marana, and that means that Aki will be on the Shadow Demon Bulldog. Guys will be on the Lone Druid. We will jump into the game. It looks like we have a bit of an issue coming out from Always Want to Fly. Maybe someone has to go to the bathroom. Maybe there's a computer issue. And it looks like we are good to go as we looks do like jump into went this to the game. bathroom. <laughs> that was very quick. It's almost instantaneous. Small bladder on that man. <laughs> we, of course, this is our last game. Now we'll cast today, obviously. Let's but take it home, buddy. There's a couple more games going on afterwards, obviously, on the stream. EG now the IG Titan, Alliance Fanatic, and EG Titan as well. So a lot of good games coming up here. And I mean, just the general amount of fantastic games we've seen in the international thus far has been impressive. I mean, so many games of this group stage have been so close. And with so many good teams, it's no surprise. So jumping into the game right now, on the dire side, four lines, it's going to be Aki on the Shadow Demon. He's going to be followed close behind by Loda on the Moran. It looks like they switched it up. It's not going to be that farming Wraith King. Bulldog will be on the Lone Druid and EGM supporting the Wraith King there. And to round it all out, it's going to be S4. He'll be playing the Bat Rider. Boots first, actually. Interesting to note. Which is a... You don't see that too often going mid. So might actually maybe switch things up and have Admiral Bulldog go mid. Looking at the build right now. Oh, Admiral Bulldog doesn't have a stout shield. He has one on his bear. Still could go in the off lane, but I'm not sure how they're going to lane things up here. They are going to go to the jungle and be a bit aggressive, though. All right, and as they do move on to the Radiant side, the Radiant side team is going to be, of course, Empire. And on this bottom lane, you can see leading out the front, always want to fly. Going to be playing your Lion right behind. Vance Score is going to be playing your Vengeful Spirit and rounding things out. Silent actually in the bottom playing the Puck. That means mid lane, Resolution is going to be playing the Naga Siren. And top lane, it is going to be Mag on your Doom. So both teams really changing it up as far as wh who's playing what and what heroes going where. Yeah, this is very interesting, actually. It looks like they might actually do Admiral Bulldog mid up against the Naga Siren with the aggressive tri lane composed of EGM, Loda, and Aki. No surprise there, but the solo safe S4 up against the offlane Doom. This should be a pretty the good matchup for S4. can stack up those sticky uh -oh. st stick napalm strikes, but they're already being aggressive down bottom with lines. Looking for a potential pickoff and always want to fly. He'll make his way towards the tower a little bit further and stay deeper in the trees. On the other side of things, Vang score is well away as well, so he's not going to get caught out. Did he go for the magic missile first? He's got his clarity. He's got his tangos. Silent here. Very surprised to see a puck, not necessarily off lane or the mid lane, but in a safe lane farming role yeah. with two heroes supporting him. He's not going to get the experience that you usually see on this hero. And they're doing a nice job blocking, though, and very important that they keep the creep equilibrium in their side so they know they're going up against the tri lane too they know the the aggro tri lane is happening you've got to be careful i mean i guess it's nice when you're going to be going up the heavy aggression of that shadow demon and marana coming out so he has a bit of silence to work with plus the both the stuns from both sides supports right there so it's going to make things tricky for alliance if they want to try to get some early kills in 
But yeah, I mean, Puck is one of those heroes that does need to get those early levels in, try to get to that Dream Coil sooner than later and just really become a problem. So we'll hope that Empire can kind of pull through this early laning phase and get to the potential they want. And look at that early D ward happening here just to not allow Alliance to get that extra bit of vision. And already Ake okay, and Loda on the hunt. Loda typically, he'll, he's like two ways he likes to play. It's either farm intensive or fight intensive. And it's more you're seeing early treads here that they want to go to the mid lane and get the fight started early. Well, they might just rotate. They might walk through mid lane, uh, maybe go for a kill, and then just head top if they want to switch things up. But there's no point in doing that. They have an aggressive trial and they could work actually pretty well against this puck who's doing okay. They're looking for disruption resolution. Who's trying to get his mirror images off. The arrow is to fly. It is going to connect on resolution. Now the right click coming through from Admiral Bulldog as well. Is this going to be first blood? It looks like it will. And it's going to go to Aki as well. Nicely done there. He gets the disruption going. They connect with the arrow already. You talked about that aggression. It's coming through in Loda being a part of it. Yeah, perfect execution. Something you always want to have when you kind of roll with that dynamic duo of the Shadow Demon and Marana. And they do get the objective complete in securing that early kill and the extra gold from that first blood. So very nice stuff and a strong start here for Alliance. And now Vanscore scouting things out in the bottom lane in the rune and Loda will go right back to that bottom lane once again. So we'll see how many times they want to go and be aggressive here with this duo lineup as uh, they return back to the bottom lane. This actually really helps out because that gives EGM a couple of levels and getting level 6 is very important as you know for a Wraith King. Level 3 Wraith King, really nice to have. He's already got two points on Wraith Fire Blast, so one stun can do a lot of damage here. You go out into the Soul Catcher, and all of a sudden you've got a, a pretty good engagement. Already they're going to go again with Wraith Fire Blast. Arrow's not going just yet. They're going to hex up the Magic Missile as well, but Bank Score in some trouble, taking a lot of right click harass here. Loda might fly. He, he will hit the arrow there, and Bank Score is going to fall as well. Aki getting chased down. There's going to be that Earth Spike. It's going to be a one for one trade in the end, but still, great arrow coming out from Loda. Loda had just leveled up to get that leap and shoot on down to the low ground and avoid that damage. Yeah. My god, he got lucky with that one right there at the end. They end up trading a one for one there. Lions pull ahead two to one, but as we can see, this might be an action-packed game. Yeah, and I, I mean, when you have a tri-lane versus tri-lane, you need to get action happening here for Alliance. And they do just that. They get a couple of quick kills. Uh, obviously, they lose support, but it's not that big of a deal. This gives a lot more room for S4 in the top lane, obviously, to get towards that blank dagger, who's taking a lot of harass from Mag, but still has the most CS in the game. Down bottom, I'm waiting for them to make a go on someone again. It's probably going to be next on silent. If they can lock him down, it's going to be very important. You can still connect that arrow with even phase shift, but it's going to be difficult. I mean, the timing with the Shadow Demon's disruption into the arrow should be critical. Mm -hmm. I really like EGM on this Wraith King, and it's just a funny coincidence that we happened to cast them last game, but I consider EGM and Zai very, very similar in their playstyle. They're two support players who really like to farm it up, so I wouldn't be surprised if EGM goes down that similar path of just getting up early farm, maybe go for power treads, but the next thing you know, they're getting something like a Maelstrom and all sorts of heavy damage to really be a problem later into the game, but this game is getting a lot of kills already. Who knows if we'll even get to that point. Yeah, I mean, it's honestly, the way that they're playing this right now, well, if they can just shut down Silent, they're going to be in a good position, but he's getting plenty of CS. That's the problem here. Mid lane is going pretty well for Admiral Bulldog. He's hitting at 22 last hits, whereas 14 for Resolution, and that first blood actually helped out a lot. Resolution, he's got to go to the creep camps and just use his Riptide. He's going to fight Bunt Golems. He doesn't want to deal with that. He's like, damn it, that's not the one I was looking for. It's a bit frustrating when you can't Riptide, obviously, but... Uh, Akim is actually looking for a potential initiation. He got the double damage rune. He's just roaming around getting rune control. Admiral Bulldog doesn't really need it. Already a thousand gold in the bank. We'll see if he picks up an early Midas here as well. With 25 CS, he's definitely leading the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it looks like uh, Empire, they're going to want to go ahead and try to strike back. A smoke is going to be picked up here for Always Want to Fly. And it's en route as soon as the quarry is going to be used there by the Naga. And maybe they look to try to venture out from this bottom lane and get something going for themselves. Actually, considering we getting a little aggressive here, pushing towards the tower. They know Ake is missing from the lane. They have advantage in numbers if they want to try to get something going and a formidable amount of stuns to work with. But uh, with EGM right there to support out Loda, they have to kind of think twice about how hard they want to commit without taking too much tower damage. Yeah, I mean, they're trying to at least put some chip damage on this tower. If they can get to tier one in the next couple of minutes, that'll be a huge win for them. Get a lot of gold, get towards the Blink Tiger. Seven already has his treads, which is really nice. Mm -hmm. And get some more gold from Mac, who's having actually a pretty good off lane, all things considered. 21 last hits, he's only six behind behind that of S4 who should have a bit more of an advantage here. So Mac has his phase boots done now. He's got his Doom. He's got his level 6. Um, they're really feeling it, I think, right now, at least for Empire. Yes, they lost a couple of kills early on, but um, it comes down to them being aggressive with their heroes and letting Resolution just kind of farm for the next couple of minutes, I'd say, until he can get that Relic up. Speaking of which, he's sitting at about 400 gold boots and a Quelling Blade, and I'm sure he's bottle curling as well, so he's got that coming his way as well. So 5 minutes, 40 seconds right now, and... It's looking good for both squads, but Admiral Bulldog's really farming away. 
Yeah. He knows how to take advantage of some good farm on that particular hero. And the next thing you know, you look away, you come back, and his bear just becomes out of control. So yeah. definitely something nice to have. And it's going to be a big, heavy pushing power that Alliance are going to be happy to have as this game does progress. But now we have a rotation here to the top lane. Actually, Loda going to be accompanying this top lane as well, alongside with Ake and, of course, S4 as Mag. Building in all that extra CS, I think it might be time to try to take him down, especially before he, you know, he gets out of control. But he has no man to work with Doom here. There comes S4 from behind, trying to fire him up. There comes the lasso, pulling him right back. Follow that up with an arrow coming out from Loda. There's the Soul Catcher. Can they take down the big bad Doom? A few more right clicks should be able to do it, and they do. So, just like that, Mag will fall in the top lane, and the last hit will go to Ake. Yeah, it was a really nice wraparound coming out from S4. He just kind of just ran around the backside, just went for the last, so they didn't even need to use the disruption into the arrow all, but that would have given them a longer duration stun at the very least. So, he got a little bit sketchy. There were no T3 rotations coming out from Empire, which I was kind of surprised about, but still, they get the kill them nonetheless, and that actually helps them out a lot. Um, but they're not really letting Loda farm, which is fine. He has 14 last hits. He'll be able to get CS elsewhere and farm elsewhere. But it's interesting that they just kind of abandoned that bottom lane. They TP down to that bottom lane, the Shadow Demon, try to get him to level 6. There was a rotation from Bankscore as well as Always Wanna Fly. It looks like they did use that Smoke of Deceit that you talked about. It didn't really work out. They didn't get much done with it. So, um, a bit unfortunate. And this does give a lot of room, however, for Silent down bottom, who's doing a nice job. Yeah. I mean, that's, a, that's one of the nice things about having your Lone Druid in the mid lane. I mean, you can still farm up with the bear and just respectfully sit back and kind of have a sight to see what might be potentially coming your way, especially when you're seeing that the supports on the Empire side bottom are missing. It's about time that maybe you step back, let your bear get up the bit of the farm and kind of scout it out for you. Now, it looks like the supports are going to split off. They place an obs there on the bottom lane, but S4 taking flight right now, looking to come on through. Just in the meantime, farming up these creeps, but he might conveniently see Vanscore here. I don't think he's going to advance on him. Four more seconds before he does have the lasso, but here comes Silent moving on forward. Silent does have Dream Coil and uses it there on S4. Goes to the low ground. There goes the big orb, and they should be able to get him here. One more right click if they got it. There it is. Battle model charges. Model S4 charges still alive. Up. He can't get up the hills. S4 making a quick escape right now. How long is Silent going to commit for this? Can he get the shot? Illusor is a mod. Very nice. Wow. Oh my god. He didn't see it coming. He used it through the fog. Well played coming up from Silent. That was so close from S4. A bit greedy, just going for those creep camps, but did not expect to get Dream Quilled. But Silent was looking for it all the way and gets the kill. So back in at 2 to 3. Gives a bit of farm. Closer to that blink dagger for Puck now. He's sitting on 500 gold. He actually Radiant's purchased up a Null Talisman, a Magic Wand, as well as Bottle. He's. It's going to take a bit more time to get to that Blink Dagger, but he's got his, his key items. <laughs> Meanwhile, Loda getting hexed up. Always want to fly going in. I think he might need to be and will. Now to Doom on Loda. Teeper rotation's coming in. Do they have enough damage here? The right click, not enough. S4 jumping in. He's got the lasso bringing Mag back. Scorch Turf is up. Now the manager in on EGM. He throws up the Rage Fire Blast. Mag taking a lot of harass here. The right click coming through. And should be enough. Just barely. The tower won't do the job. Sticky Napalm still going. Here comes Silent. Waning Rift. No, they will lose. That poor Doom, EGM turning around trying to fight on Silent, but EGM's level 6, he wants to die, he wants to slow them down, and he will. Now the Rayfire Blast might come in as well, the Earthquake off target, off the mark, always want to fly, should go down for this, it's 2 for 1, and maybe even more, Silent might have to jaunt out, he's got no illusion for 3 seconds, Silent getting brought down potentially, trying to juke the phase shift, but no, Silent plays it nicely, waits it out, now he troop close, EGM, he has no reincarnation, the illusion, he will snipe another kill, Silent backing off, he's got phase shift in just a second, He's gonna use it. He's got three stacks of the poison on him, but not nearly enough to bring him down. Mid lane, though, they're also making a go on Vance score. It looks like Bulldog trying to take advantage of his bear, but now the bear is a bit of trouble. If they can get secure this extra bit of gold, that would be very nice for him. It is on the retreat back, and you know, it's a big bear. It's gonna be hard to take down, even with just a little bit of a stout shield. But yeah, man, questionable stuff. They got the Doom out on Loda. He made the retreat. It was he was gonna die no matter what, but decided just to try to make the run back, I guess, just in case. Didn't want to linger around and to get a maybe a swift deny from one of his allies, or maybe just get some right clicks in before you go anyway. So, you know, interesting stuff. Four to five, your new score, Alliance. Still slightly ahead, but you know, very nice stuff coming out from Silent to kind of counter back and get that kill on EGM. Yeah, absolutely. And while that was all happening too, Admiral Bulldog actually took down the mid lane tier one tower, which is really nice. That got him a lot of gold. He's sitting at 2,000 right now. He doesn't have anything on the courier. What about his bear? Sitting back at home, just regening up, just a stout shield and some tranquil boots as well. So um, he's just kind Radiance of, I guess, going to farm just straight towards that radiance, mm -hmm. and not even going for Midas unless he bought it. With the gloves of haste on the courier, no. Just 1700 gold. Where is all this gold going to? Is the question. Tranquil's on him. He's got, oh, an orb. 
Radiant's and that's what he picked up next. But attack. a big smoke of deceit coming out from Empire. They're going to go and check Roshan first. They're not in there. The rest of the lines are down bottom, essentially, just trying to push in this tier one tower with Admiral uh -oh. Bulldog helping out. They do have Radiant's demolish on that there. EGM also attack. smoked up the lines on the backside. And two ships passing the night, potentially. Vanksgore going to get revealed with EGM. He's going to make a run for it. Now they know that everyone has smoked up. Now both teams back off. Empire say, no, listen, we want to fight now. But they don't have really the room to do so. They can wrap around and try to go on Admiral Bulldog, but it seems that they're not going to make that play. And Alliance will get away. Scott Free, Moonlight Shadow. Maybe they want to go back in now. It looks like S4. He should have his Blink Tiger by now. No, he's getting very close to it, however. Oh, 1700. Yeah. They're going to try to find an initiation. Always want to fly. Caught out of position. Raid Fire Blast. Long range arrow. Voda connects. They get the kill with the Soul Catcher. Easily done. Jaunt away from Silent. Now they'll try to chase after him. Big Dream Quill. The Raid Fire Blast. He doesn't have Face Shift. Now the last. So Silent's going to get caught out. They're going to take two. Alliance. Now they'll take the tower as well. And barreling down this bottom lane. Really nice move by Shadow from Lorda. And they will take some extra gold to boot. Fantastic decision making coming up from Alliance right there. They go ahead and pull on back and then they know with the benefit of that Moonlight Shadow, they can go ahead and just turn back and take the fight. And by that point, it looked like they had dispersed on the side of Empire. Doom was like, well, I'm already out here from the bottom lane. I don't need to be a part of this. And unfortunately for Always Wanna Fly, just caught at the wrong place at the wrong time. They swiftly take him down before Empire can even be there to help him out. And as you saw, it looked like Silent was trying to get away, but they were already onto him. They went well ahead towards the retreat and ended up catching him out. So a quick two-man takedown for Alliance, plus the benefit of the tower. Very nice stuff coming out from the previous TI3 champions. Yeah, and the thing is, too, you could argue that Resolution's farming really well, and he's got 2.8k gold, getting closer and closer to the Relic and the Radiance, but at the same time, you guess, I mean, so is the Low Druid, so is Admiral Bulldog. He's standing at 2.5k, and he's been participating more in teamfights. He's been taking down towers, so, I mean, yes, if Resolution can get that farm, they're going to be difficult to deal with. As it stands now, Alliance are putting on the right amount of pressure, and they're doing it well, so and we'll see if they go for another smoke. I think that... With the Blink Dagger on the bat right now, they absolutely have the opportunity to get something else done. Dyer's Aki has one on him right now. If they want to attack. smoke up, they can look for some more ward placements as well and get some more map control. They actually have a couple of Observer Wards placed in really good spots on top of that Empire. They're looking to just take down Towers, and Silent actually is going to take down the Tier 1 Tower to They just let it go for Dyer's free. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually Silent's Blink Dagger as well, so pretty nice. And then Mag will also complete up his Hand of Midas on top Radiant's of that. So, so now tower. we have two teams with some pretty formidable Blink initiations on both sides, that being the Bat Rider and now the Puck, both having the blink initiation and well I don't think the S4 has given away the information just yet that he actually has the blink they're looking to come in from behind Empire still lingering around even after taking out the tier one but here we go Vance Core is like I gotta get the hell out of here quickly properly TP's out same goes for silent S4 is not going to see anyone up there and they make their quick escape yeah that's just smart and just map awareness they really don't have any radiant observer wards out in fact the only one they have is over at the Roche pit but they just knew that they were off the map for the most part and they just say listen let's get out of here so I mean, really smartly played. Also, Alliance throwing down so many Sentry Wards, they really do not want Resolution farming these camps, which is huge. I mean, where is he going to go to farm right now? He's still sitting at 3.5k gold. That's the thing. Resolution is finding farm even without all these creep camps to, mm -hmm. to work with. So you've got to give him props, too. Um, but he's very close to his Relic. Speaking of Relic, Lone Druid not quite there just yet. He should be saving up for it. Still, he's got Phase, Stout Shield, uh -oh. and the Orb of Venom. Well. Nice quick shift and the coil, but it's not going to stop S4 from lassoing up Silent here in the mid lane, followed with a bit of poison and EGM, and Puck, that fairy's out of here. Quickly bursted down on uh, Ake, believe it or not, picks up another kill and actually moves on to a killing spree on his Shadow Demon. Yeah, and uh, he's just been really involved, and that's what you need to do on the Shadow Demon, just be involved in fights and all across the map. So, smartly played there, Silent getting blown up again, but this time he should have had his Plank Dagger, in fact he did, so... Song of the Siren top lane. They really want to bring down Loda here. They're going to TP in a couple of heroes. Always want to fly. He's going to go for the Hex in just a second. Loda might try to leap away. Even Moonlight Shadow, but the Hex is there. He leaps forward towards the tower. He and Snare flies as well. The Magic Missile, the Earth Spike is going to come in just a moment. The Mana Drain and the Riptide. Textbook gank coming out from Empire with that Song of the Siren. And that actually is enough money for Resolution's Relic now. He just needs to get that recipe to get the Radiance. That'll be about 15 to 16 minutes. And uh, then it's going to be a little bit dangerous. I mean, he still has to farm up his bots and Manta style and all that stuff, but he's still pretty scary. So. Yeah. It's, it's going to be important at this point when Naga does decide to get a Radiance for Alliance to just kind of still maintain control of the map as much as possible because if... You leave only so many spots for this Naga Radiance to farm. She'll farm it, and she'll farm it quick, but she's not leaving anything else for the rest of her team. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be able to find any farm anywhere, and it will, all you'll have is just a Naga Siren. If you don't have a lot of good backup behind it, 
it's only going to do you so much good. So we'll see if Alliance can kind of maintain pace of the game and maintain control here as, uh, you know, we get ready to get to that point where some of these luxury items, the Radiance, is a buildup on both the Naga as well as Bulldog's Lone Druid. Who, speak of the devil, has made a move into the Roach Pit and is already beginning to duke it out. Yeah, this is a smart play. They need to take more objectives, and I think that if you're not going to be taking towers, you might as well just get Roshan if you're on the dire side. You usually see people that are playing up against the Nagasar and they want to try and put pressure on the outer towers and take them all down as quickly as possible and push into the base. Uh, Alliance doesn't seem to be that worried about it. They just kind of want to get the objectives and take them as they come. They don't want to force anything too crazy. Just take what uh, Empire giving them, essentially. So they've done a nice job so far, and there is a relic now up on the bear of Outer So there's going to be double ratings pretty soon. They're just going to leave the Aegis there in the well for whoever wants it. Looks like it's going to be S4 grabbing it, but... EGM with a Midas on his Wraith King. I mean, we were talking about how he's a greedy support, but there it is, man. Doesn't get more much greedy than the Magic Golden Glove, and he's looking to try to become a formidable force as the game goes a little bit later, so very nice stuff, opting to step out from any sort of you know early sort of blink or anything like that, and I mean, I like it. They're, they're kind of building up a very nice late game to contest the one force of this Naga Siren. Yeah, the problem is they just need to be able to kind of make sure the creep waves are on the other side of the river and that's exactly what Admiral Bulldog is looking to do with his Radiance Bear. You see it so often and that's exactly what the Radiance is good for. You can't attack with the bears too far away. You might as well just have the Radiance Bear going and just make sure that you're pushing across the river with that burn. Just bring it back towards you. Make sure it doesn't get caught out but the Radiance is a very good start for Admiral Bulldog who's very close to it by the way. Uh, I mean, he's sitting at 600 gold, so just 600 away. Same with Resolution. Yeah. So, I mean, the fact that they both have their ratings at the same time is actually kind of crazy to me, considering they're both in the mid lane. Resolution got ganked a couple of times, and Admiral Bulldog actually got a couple towers as well. So, Resolution getting this early, early, early ratings is pretty nice, I'd say. Yeah. A race for the Radiance, and we'll see who's going to be able to cross the finish line first here. As you know, for Alliance, the three congregate together once more a smoke and a moonlight shadow, just that double dose of invis as they begin to migrate forward and maybe consider scouting out the uh, opposing jungle to see if they can catch anyone out farming in the uh, jungle here. So they move on through, but for the majority of Empire, they're already well out of the way here, bottom lane and pulling all the way back. So you know, we we're hoping for Alliance to kind of maintain, maintain, ugh, maintain control of the map and the pace of the game and well they're doing it thus far and the sentries continue to come out they continue to block out all these camps they don't want to have naga to get any sort of side farm and i think it's a smart choice to make yeah i mean if they don't get anything out of that gank then at least they get more map control and they make sure that resolution is not farming the jungle that's probably the most important thing for them so um mission accomplished this it was actually kind of an action factor early game that sort of developed into just this farming mid game right now. Both teams just okay with just sitting back and just kind of farming their own items. And the ratings hasn't been picked up on either hero just yet, but it's very close. I think Admiral Bulldog actually has the oh. money. Mid lane, maybe some initiation. There's going to be the last one back set coming in from S4. They break down Mag potentially. He's got the Doom. They Wraith Fire Blast first. Arrow connected as well. But is it enough? They will kill him. The Soul Catcher, the damage amplification is ridiculous. Fang score is going to get caught out. No, there's the Salt coming in from Resolution. Bulldog wants to be on the backside right now. They still want to keep going here. The arrow is are going to fly. The arrow is going to sail through. It's not going to connect. It's going to split both between Always Want to Fly and Vank Score. So now they're just going to make a go here on this tier 2 tower. With Song down and with no Doom available, they can probably take this. But Blink now initiation with the Doom Call, the Waiting Rift, the Illusion Orb. A lot of damage, but not nearly enough to get the kill. No Mex coming through. Always Want to Fly. Getting right click down with the Entangle, the RNG. Admiral Bulldog will get it every time. Yep. There's going to be Glyph going as well. He's a root lord. Uh, I mean, there's no other way around it. Actually, the arrow catches on fan score, unfortunately, and he will fall to the fire of S4. He's been silent, eating a lot of damage. Here comes a net from Resolution to hold the bear. This time, not going to be doing quite enough. They step back and should be able to secure this tier 2 tower. And that all started with a very finicky jump in coming out from Silent. He scouted out Loda, made the blink in, but then was like, I don't want to commit just yet. Didn't pull out a coil or anything. And the next thing you know, S4 coming in from the back lines and it just got ugly real quick. Yeah, and Silent just got a bit too aggressive there and Vanksquare actually paid the price. Uh, just getting caught out, arrowed. Really nice arrow coming up from Loda there. Meanwhile, Maso is going to be up on Mag. They're going to bring him down yet again. It looks like the right click. The Star Storm Moonlight Shadow just to cover their retreat. They get yet another on that Doom. Oh, poor Mag getting caught out again. So, I mean, it looks really good right now for Alliance sitting at 20 minutes in. 
And even EGM, like you talked about, getting that really early Midas, he picks up a dagger. If you're able to fight and have a Midas and still get your blink at like 20 minutes, that's beautiful. He can now start building towards right click as well as, or maybe just tankiness in general. And now it's kind of just like Empire, just like, what do we do here? We have to make sure Resolution continues to farm, but again, there's no where for him to farm. They, they don't have the map control to farm the enemy jungle, and they can't farm their own jungle because they've been, the camps have been warded to a certain extent, so it's a bit rough. Yeah, it's even worthy to note that EGM didn't even need to use his reincarnation in that last fight, so that just goes to show how well things have been going thus far for Alliance as they take another team fight in their favor. And they want to keep the action happening right here. S4 makes his appearance back into the mid lane right now. Fireflies to clear out some of these waves and keep the pressure and try to suffocate Empire back into their own base, like I was saying, because then you're limiting a lot of that farm, and Naga's got to be the only one to take it all up, and well, she'll have nothing else. There goes a couple of Nets. They got that illusion though, <laughs> but here comes the bear. Panda gonna come right in and see if he can burn her down a little bit with that radiance. But unfortunately, another misfire coming out from Empire. Arrow flies, speaking of misfires, will not catch and They do step back, and unfortunately, they will sacrifice another radiance tower. Tier fallen. one picked up from Admiral Bulldog. And man, this, this is gonna get out of hand real quick. Yeah, I mean, Resolutions is trying to find farm, but it's really not going down. In fact, he's going to find a couple of hits. Disruption Soul Catcher. The arrow's going to sail through. Wow, did you see that damage? The Soul Catcher arrow just blew him up. My god. Now they're going to look for always want to fly. The Hex is up. He is squishy. That Firefly is ticking away. The right click from Loda and the blinker from EGM should be plenty and will be to grab yet another kill. This opens up the tier two in that top lane, but bottom lane, they're also pressuring here with Silent and Banks, where they already used the glyph, but now Silent will be back home. They realize they might have to actually defend their tier three tower. Alliance smoke up. They're waiting Dyer's for the rest of the squad to jump out of the smoker. They'll jump at them exactly. Empire just come forward essentially and they can jump on top of them, but no. Lucio are coming through. That smoke just to get there further. They'll take down a three tower as well, and that's pretty nice. Yeah, 22 minutes in. Taking down a tier three. It looks like Alliance did a nice job shaking off day number one as they're looking to secure their second win to day number two. EGM feeling very confident jumping right in as he should. He still has Reincarnate to work with, but Resolution got to go ahead and put him to sleep with the Song of the Siren here. As four still on the outlines jump. Right in, EGM might fall here, but like I said, coming right back for round number two. Resolution eats a Star Storm and will fall, unfortunately. Now Mag caught up with a bit of a stun. Clone has been doomed out, should fall right here. And there's the orb to secure the kill. Jumping forward, trying to go for Ake as well. Silent moves on to a triple kill. Admiral a double. Now Empire and company moving forward. They take down the Panda and S4 and Bulldog, the only survivors to tell the tale. They step back regardless the damage has been done. Tier 3 and racks have fallen. Yeah, they still have their melee racks, but that's that's kind of iffy. I mean, again, you have a Naga Siren, so you can really take this lane if you really need to, but I gotta say, there was a really nice initiation coming up from Silent. They had to waste a couple of buybacks there. In fact, if we look at it, who bought back in that scenario was actually Resolution as well as Always Want to Fly. So Resolution is not even close to his next item, which still should be bots. Um, S4 didn't even use his lasso there, and Admiral Bulldog, just with the ratings for an over the course of a long fight, Dyer's you're going to get a couple attack. of kills. In fact, he's going for a pipe of insight on a lone druid, which we rarely see, but that's going to be really helpful against the likes of Silent Resolution. An arrow will connect and always want to fly. Will they come fallen. in to try to fight this question? Resolution, he's got no oh. song, and the flame break back, the firefly, the right click, that's an easy kill, an easy pickup for Loda, and another one bites the dust there as Alliance now take a 17 to 8 lead. Set for it. Jumps out, throws the long. Gets that lion TP. He's promptly out, so. And AGM will step over, farm up a few ancients right here. We only have a small bit of time before this Roche potentially will come right back. So Alliance might consider waiting to get a hold of that extra life, then go knock and maybe back at that top lane and try to finish things off as far as the second uh, melee racks or just go for another lane altogether. But regardless, take a look at the gold graph. You can see, no surprise, still heavy in favor of Alliance. You know, 7,500 at one point. So things are looking good for them. It would take a bit for them to kind of give this one away. Yeah, I, I'd say so. Um, it really comes down to them just making sure they keep the pressure on, make sure Resolution doesn't get away with just doing what he's doing right now. Just split pushing and making them force back here. So what Alliance are going to do is they're going to smoke up, they're going to try to find more pickoffs. If they have to do it up in the top lane, they will. Uh, they have their Courier actually dropped here in the Roach Pit just to make sure they know when it respawns, and they're going to see very quickly. There's about a 40 second respawn from the 8 minute timer. They're looking up to this top lane. They might find Bank score. They could find Mag as well. Looks like that's who they're jumping for. Each is going to jump forward here in just a second. The Great Fire Blast. The last one coming out. S4 doing work here. Aki throws up the Soul Catcher. They get an easy kill on Mag, who falls yet again. The arrow sailing through. 
little long range, not even necessary, but successful, yeah. <laughs> that came out of nowhere, actually. Silent now running at loaded. He's gonna throw up the illusion rope, not gonna jump through. Oh, yes, he will. Drew Crow on to two. Now he throws up the necro as well, but Silent taking a lot of right clicker ass, as well as that bear with the radiance for doing so much of this swap coming in, though. They will up and stare up Admiral Bulldog, but there is support on the way. Now, the radiance for not enough to get the kill. Song still available if they need it, but. Admiral Bulldog will survive. They'll have to kill up these, of course, uh, annoying Necro units. And not a problem there. Arrow's going to connect. It looks like I always want to fly, but Resolution's ready to go with Song. And they might actually just use this to cover their retreat, but they will have to lose the Tier 2 Tower. The Maws from the Bear are doing work. However, it is going to take some damage. Yeah, I, I don't know too much about that Song. They're not going to stop the Force coming their way on this tower. They don't even have Doom to help them out in any sort of team fight. So, you know, regardless, Resolution's going to have to just kind of take it to the mid lane and try to find some farm elsewhere. But Alliance has slowly begun to suffocate Empire back into their own base and just being a relentless force. Ake stepping forward, laying out an aggressive ops ward to kind of see the movement coming out from Empire. They should have seen him place that ward, so hopefully a century to come soon here. As four sees a bit of a Naga illusions and even takes away the creep. Just, you know, not giving anything easy here to Empire. Absolutely not. Resolution will finish up the five. No surprise that he goes to that next, but... I mean, you, you need a bit more. You still need time if you're Empire. It's definitely possible to bring this game back with the Nagus Iron, but with the way that Admiral Bulldog is flying with the items he's getting, it's going to be difficult. I mean, he, he goes for a Pipe of Insight on himself, and he gets, he's got a Blast on his bear, he's got the Radiance as well, so he, it's, it's not just pure damage, he's going for kind of survivability here, and Pipe is going to be huge for his team, and he's the only one that's really going to be able to get that farm. EGM actually could get it with the Hand of Midas. In fact, he's very close to an Assault Cross. Lota sitting on a Maelstrom, despite not CSing very well early on, Lota is very close to a Mantis style potentially. He's got a Maelstrom, so uh, maybe even a Mjolnir a little bit later, but this is really Alliance's time. With an Aegis now, they need to keep the pressure on. Down bottom, the Radiance Burn coming through again, but it doesn't seem like Alliance are too much. They're not really bothered by it, so. No. And especially now that S4 has that BKB completed, he could just freely jump in and try to find any sort of pickoff they want. So th if we thought it was hard before, Alliance is just going to try to go ahead and close this one out very quickly, if possible, and not even allow this Naga to try to build into any future items. The bots have now been complete and has a hold of a gem, but she's going to need to try to take up a lot more because 1k life is not going to be enough. And you're absolutely right. This bear is actually doing a lot of work. Sounds just trying to make sure that it it, they might even just be able to get this bear, but the thing is, he's still pushing out that bottom lane. And they're going to lose a tier through tower mid very quickly if they don't TB back. Emerald Bulldog's just like, yeah, that's fine. I can just recall it at any moment's notice. So if you guys want to keep doing that, that's okay with me. They're going to go to the high ground here in just a second. EGM's going to lead the way he has for incarnation. Uh, the age should be on Loda, I believe. In fact, it is. Song's gonna go. This is gonna be their time to fight right now. They're looking for some damage here. They popped up the Nickel 3 as well. The Shiva's Guard is gonna go. It's a bit early coming through. The Dream Claw as well. The BKB from S4, but he does get doomed up right now. The Earthquake coming in. Mech will keep them up and ready to fight, but EGM getting low. He does have reincarnation, mind you. The bear is gonna get snared up. Loda taking some damage. Meanwhile, Silent gets the kill. They actually mana burned down. The Wraith came before he could get his reincarnation off. So now they might think about backing off here. A nice defense coming out from Empire, that bend but don't break mentality. They're still Radiant's in this one. Very nice little uh, necro hook work coming out from Silent to deny EGM that second life. So they do manage to take down one casualty there. And not too much damage has actually been done in this mid lane. Now, Loda does still have the Aegis to work with if he was taken down. And obviously, they haven't even used the uh, lasso yet. Now they're making a ghost to get a witch on. S4, the jump forward, defensive disruption to come out in the meantime from Ake. Now looking to shift back forth wide. Doesn't do the joint to it in the meantime. Loda very low here but should be fine. Earns up in the meantime. There goes an arrow. Obviously will be off the mark, and Empire pull themselves back right into the base. Yeah, and they, the good thing about this is Empire have complete vision over this area, so they know exactly where Alliance are. They know what they can do, and they're not fighting willy-nilly. They're just making sure that they have all of their information before going in. In fact, always want to fly. I believe he still had his finger of death, and they really wanted to use it, but there was no way they could have gotten anything done. Alliance are playing this really nicely. Even if they lose a couple of heroes, they're still getting kills in the backside. But Nag always want to fly Vanguard. They're looking to go on Loda. There's the silence as well. Loda getting caught out. He has the Aegis, mind you. Great defensive disruption coming up from Rocket to save his life. Blink 4 coming from S4. Cannot get a lasso target. There's the BKB. Lasso on to Mag. They've got to get the arrow now. Nice swap though to stop it. Vanguard just avoids the arrow. Sidesteps even. Vanguard still taking right click and firefly damage. Might fall here. The Maelstrom clock. Loda. Now there's the Aegis going through. Aki taking so much of that Radiance burn damage. S4 about 
about to fall as well. It's how he gets a double kill. Loda backs away, gets doomed up. EGM still has reincarnation. No mana burn, but of course they still have that Necro Book unit. They're going to turn their attention to Loda. They're going to use the Illusion He's going to jaunt further now. Admiral Bulldog, meanwhile, not doing much. He's backing away. Now they use the song just to catch up to Loda, and they get the kill. Great Fire Blast flying and always want to fly. Will they get this kill with the ratings burn? It looks like yes. At least they get something out of it, but they're going to lose the bear. It's going to be down for a couple of seconds at the very least. Empire, they're starting to fight back here. They're starting to throw some punches, and Alliance, oh boy. Yeah, Empire are showing that they are not going to go down without a fight. Alliance felt very confident trying to turn it back on with S4 jumping in, but you can never forget they have that Vengeful Spirit, so Lasso completely denied, something that you should just be expecting, and they try to move on forward without the rest of their team there to back them up, and as they kind of shift in a little late to the party, it just was too late by that point. Empire managed to secure a couple of kills. They did lose a couple of casualties, speaking of which, mid lane oh, will nice. not catch in silent with the Quick reaction, blinks away. He's got 5k gold as well. He might even just be able to buy a scythe outright pretty soon. He's got his level, uh, the level 3 Necro Book was such a really great purchase coming out from the puck. Knowing that they had the Wraith King and that they needed to mana burn him down some way. Um, and even for pushing as well. This makes it a bit safer for resolution and they can push a bit harder as well. And they have their, they have their camps back, so resolution has a lot to work with now. They have their map control, at the very least defensive map control. Alliance, you saw them at about 20 minutes pushing in. A lot of the, the wards were covered down in this bottom jungle, and they were even going for, you know, tier threes at that point, and even getting sets of raxes, or at least one rax. Now, Resolution feels confident. He's mm -hmm. got a Radiance, he's got 3.6k gold, and bots as well, and he's carrying the gem on top of it all, so... And the more important thing to note is he's almost level 16, so he almost has that level 3 Song of the Siren. Oh yeah, I think it's really, really sweet. Only one minute Song of the Sirens, you'll have that for every fight if you'd like. And they've actually been using it pretty aggressively and very well, so it's going to be a very nice tool to have, but, uh, you know, it's it's they still got a bit of a hill to climb right now. I mean, Alliance, they, they got to shake this off. Don't get too overconfident. You're feeling far and ahead, but you can't give anything away at this point unless you, you know, it's, it's something that happens when you're going against the Naga Siren. There's always an opportunity for them to come back. We have seen the Miracle Naga Siren done before. Yeah, I mean, even as close as like a couple days before the event, we've seen like players like Burning just absolutely take it to teams like Newbie where you think that somehow, some way, there, there's no way a Naga can win this game, but all of a sudden it just comes out and I mean, it's very difficult to deal with. With Resolution getting 4.2k gold, his next item, if he finishes it up very soon, it could be a huge force to reckon with. Loda, he's got to shoot an arrow. He's got a Lincoln Sphere now as well. Always want to fly. Nice juke on EGM. He gets the Hex up as well. They're going to try to fight this, I think. Dream Quill? No, they just want to oh. try to get Always want to fly out of there, but he got blown up. EGM with the crit. Gets an easy kill, so... Admirable uh, effort there from uh, Always Want to Fly to try yeah. to get away with a bit of that juke and jive, but and they even expend the coil to try to save him out, but it is not going to be enough. So now with one down, it's a very low uh, death timer, so he should be back in the mix relatively soon, but Alliance want to try to take advantage of that. So they're coming down the mid lane, and they want to go knocking at the mid lane door here. Necro Book, i got to get the hell out of here. Don't want to <laughs> hand over any sort of free, easy gold. Loda fires out the arrow, the Hail Mary, to try to scout things out at least an EGM. The first one on the front line, now with the that Reincarnate. Happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that tier 3 tower. Yeah, and this time the mana burn isn't going to come. They already used the uh, the book not too long ago. So EGM, if he goes down, it's not going to be that big of an issue here. Uh, just got a green carnade coming through. The Insair going out of the bear right now. The bear doesn't seem to care though. It seems to keep going in that tier 3 tower. S4 looking to initiate. He fireflies up right now. They're still ready to go though. That bear doing so much work. Now the song is going to go in and this is going to be the time for Empire. Look at how far away EGM and Aki are away though. They're looking for an initiation. Mag's looking for a potential doom. He flicks away immediately the BKB as well. Now Loda comes in. EGM comes in. They want to fight the Insnare on Mag, but nice swap coming through. They're still alive, but barely silent. He's able to get away with Mag. Not so lucky. The Stars from Loda gets an immediate double kill with that. Mag buys back instantaneously. They're still going. They want this melee rax right now, and they should be able to get it as well. And it looks okay for uh, Empire for a bit, but now it looks like they will move these buildings. Alliance are veterans. They know what, what to do in situations like this. They have a very nice spread and avoid any sort of offensive desire to try to go for any last hurrah here, and this might be it. A do or die situation for Empire as they're losing a lot of the best mag, getting too much damage from this bear. Oh god, and the bear get off my butt and takes him down. Unfortunately, Admiral Bulldog moves onto an unstoppable streak. Now silent under the gun right now. Orbs to the side to get away from this one and will be successful. Always want to fly coming in from the south, but the damage has been done now. Top and mid racks are gone. Empire 
very, very wounded on this one, considering going for one last fight. No, EDM jumping in, the flame break going as well, easy kill. Banks score swaps up just to save his own life for a moment. There's the reincarnation. The song should be available for resolution. In fact, it's not. Three dead now. The stars from going doesn't connect on silent, but well, that might be all Alliance need to take this game. Yeah, maybe two sets of racks down, you can come back from it when you have an Ox Iron. Three sets of racks is almost impossible, and especially if resolution goes down, he's got no buyback. Gets entangled up as well. He's done. Four dead. GG is called an alliance after a rough start in day number one. They come back. Day number two looking strong. Yep. TI3 champions, they don't want to go out so easily. They're doing a really strong day two performance here. And let's see if they can keep the tread going for Empire. They're going to need to try to shake it off. Maybe have a, a good dinner <laughs> and just try to get right back into the game. So rough stuff thus far. And uh, we'll go, but I think we are done for today as far as me and Mop, but plenty more games to come. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, here on the English Forestry.